Now, I guess I'll start my camera. Okay. See if you can see me on here. Oh, wait. Hang Look on. Look at you. Wait, first of all, your makeup is insanely beautiful. Thank you. Are you ready to what? see my costume? Yes. Okay. I'm Hopefully scared. Hopefully it worked. It's really hard to walk around in. Oh, it's because I, al I already get the pun. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's because <laughs> you're a mummy. Oh. I'm a mummy. <laughs> I remember I showed you that picture of the uh, the baby of the baby brewing Halloween baby shower thing. Yes, one I of saw the that. first one, one of the first pictures is uh, mummy to be, and I was like, damn, I wish I did that for Christine. So I'm glad mummy, you're taking advantage of it. Yes, exactly. I decided to do a uh, soon to be mummy, or I don't know, I don't remember the exact phrase. Your but... makeup, you are. This is the prettiest you've ever been. I think. <laughs> Whoa! You are looking gauze. How fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> you are smoking hot right now. Wow. That is so nice of you. Uh, Adam. Let me see, are you? Let me see what you got going you, on over there. Are you single, Christine? Okay, here. Um, yes, very single, as you can tell from my costume. <laughs> With a human inside me. I, I hope you're um I hope you're ready for this because you're mummy and I'm baby. <gasps> <laughs> Do you like Brava. what you see? This is this could be your baby one day. Brava. <laughs> if I... it is, I'm putting it up for adoption. I don't know what to tell you. This is terrifying. Um, happy Halloween from your future babies since they're not here yet. Damn. So I decided I'd fill in the role. Listen, I'm beside myself at that, at that bonnet you're wearing. <laughs> okay. This isn't even a baby bonnet. Apparently it's like, um, like for like, um, like your leg. <laughs> no, it's, oh. <laughs> it's a garter right? or whatever that's called. No, it's, um, it's like old timey, like Thanksgiving bonnet. Attire. Yeah. That's what I said. A bonnet. It's a literal well, bonnet. I thought I was looking for baby bonnet, and shockingly, the internet does not have that for sale. That so. is the wildest shit I've ever seen, Em. This is going to be a really weird Instagram post when we post this. Thank you. Also, do you like? I tried to make a little altar situation here for you. I can't deal with you. how good respectfully it is. so, as someone who does not practice. But this is um, a prop from the Blair Witch Project. Wow! Is that wow a real this, one? Nah, nah, oh. nah. I'm not that cool. Um. I mean, you are. That's why I asked, because I like thought maybe it was possible. Trust me, if, if I could have stolen something from ISS that had to do with the Blair Witch Project, it, you would have oh. heard about it by now. Hang on, I'm uh, I'm upping my microphone. Okay, yeah, I'm readjusting my I got mummy overwhelmed dolls. by how um, just uh, intoxicating your, your makeup is right now, Christine. <laughs> you want to look at my stomach instead? It's also very <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> um, I, uh, well, I... I I, if it was last minute, as we always do, so we realized this episode comes out on Halloween, mm -hmm. and we were like, oh, God, Christine is going to be unavailable we any know, day. We, we didn't even know if you were going to be here for this. No, so I was like, am didn't. I going to do my Halloween episode all by myself? Is that what's oh. going to happen here? And then last night, like, two in the morning, I was like, shit, I don't have a costume. And then I was like, I, I don't know. And so I went to Target and bought all this gauze. I don't know. I don't know. How much? It. So how? what was the... Um, what was the, the price of all that gauze at Target? Well, you see, I went to buy gauze like from the pharmacy section and they were all out. And I was like, that seems like a weird thing to be all out of every brand. So Except places... it's Halloween. Everyone's trying to be a mummy, Yeah, but I then guess. I went to the Halloween section and they had all this gauze and I was like, aha. Uh -huh. so they... This is costume gauze. This not... is costume gauze. Uh-huh. Yeah. The gauze was $10 and I was like, honestly, if I'm buying a bunch of rolls of gauze, it'll probably be more expensive. Fair. And so I bought $10 of gauze and then these... These little eyeballs came from um, a little jack-o'-lantern kit that was three dollars, so it That's spent so thirteen sweet. bucks. Um, and oh, I also hear Emma I have. Let me see if I can adjust this. This ensemble, by the way, was not thirteen dollars. This took hard work. So yeah, well, okay, yeah, Obviously. I know. Mine, okay, mine was uh, hard work because I had to stand for a while, and that alone is I, a lot of hard work nowadays. I was gonna say how. Okay, fair. I was gonna say how did you actually. Did you have Blaze hold a piece of gauze and you just no, spun around? I, I literally sat, stood in my bedroom, like trying to wrap myself up and tie <laughs> it and rip it and cut it. It was there. You should see the the rabbit like on the floor of my bedroom. It's just like pieces of gauze. I need to vacuum is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, I have my little pumpkin, my new favorite, as I made you smell the whole time you were here. My cinnamon pumpkin. You do, you do love that orange one. Yeah. That Target candle. 
my little uh, R.I.P. candle that I'm still scared to light, even though like the fun stuff happens when you light it, the coffin. Uh huh. I have the and same then, one. I have the same one. And I'm also scared. Have you so. lit it? Oh, okay. No, I am scared. I have my Mothman, and then I have Emothy. Emothy. Yes. Oh, for those who don't know, um, I bought the baby, a little monster buddy, and his name's Emothy. Yeah, and Em was mad that I wasn't naming the baby's middle name Emothy, and so as retribution, now the baby's best friend stuffed animal is Emothy. Which you have to have an Emothy, and now it, we're crossing generational lines here. There's two Emothys for two Sheefers. Well, how sweet is that? You're welcome. Um, okay, sorry. Oh, last thing I want to say, not last thing, but I want to say for people who are listening to the audio and can't see us, we should describe what the hell we're even wearing or doing. We haven't even told anybody. Okay, well, Christine is a smoke show today, um, but also wrapped <laughs> Let's leave in it at that. gauze. <laughs> but also Just kidding. wrapped up in mummy gear. Are yeah, you, wearing... is that a bra? What's the, what's the black situation here? Oh, it's here? a tank top with a bra under it. Don't worry, I'm doubled up here. Um, uh-huh. I, yeah, I'm wearing a black outfit with like, like gauze all over it. And then, oh, oh, wait, this is the fun part is that there's two eyeballs on my stomach because there's a baby mummy inside it. It's crazy that there's actually two other eyeballs inside your stomach right now. Yeah. No? Okay. Yikes. And then M, I guess, is wearing a bonnet, as you all know already, and looks like a onesie. Oh, where did, okay, hold on. (laughs) I'm now analyzing this onesie situation. (laughs) Did that come with a little duck on it? Um, it Oh, that's the wrong side. It did, but um, <laughs> I didn't expect it. And it came in, I I didn't see that coming. But now I'm feeling like this is half of a Phil and Lil situation. Yes, 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 100%. And you then the, like stick, rat with the sticker bonnet. was the sticker was a choice, was a personal choice that I did. I um, love the accessorizing. It says, I heart mom. And then also uh, <laughs> on my massive baby bottle, I also put another I heart mom sticker on. I can't um, deal with the be- bottle and the bonnet together with the b- onesie. It's a lot. It's a lot. The bonnet. It's very the good. bonnet came separate, uh, as you heard earlier from me right. saying it was like pilgrim costume. So, um, <laughs> but I thought I can't. I can't half-ass this. So I got the bottle. If you recognize this bottle, Christine, uh, Eva and I bought five of them for your house. When oh we yeah, they're in my you. kitchen. <laughs> Which means that this is a sixth. Which I, means that I have five in my snack cabinet and i'm like i don't know what to do with these five gigantic bottles but which also means after buying five i bought a whole other one to be here oh i thought you brought one with you you had to buy another one this is the sixth one i've bought a lot of big plastic baby balls although i will say the suction on them is fantastic oh i forgot (laughs) to show you the other part of my ensemble are you ready this is this is to keep this is so i'll shut the fuck up when you're telling your story is it a pass? Oh, no. Oh, God. Wait, wait. Make a noise so the camera Do goes. Do you like what you see? No? I hate, I hate it, why? actually, so wait, much. Why don't you like, why don't you don't like what's happening here? Also, by the way, if you notice, this is not baby size. This is an oh, adult-sized. Repulsive. <laughs> I'm just, look, you know what? Maybe this could fix that, that chewing I was gonna say, going to say, I feel like on. if you have a fixation, like on fingernails or something, maybe that's a good, like, um stress relief toy it does feel amazing on the molars i gotta be honest it feels pretty good so oh um enjoy that visual during yeah the show. i will try my best um if you haven't figured out this is our halloween episode where we're dressed up for the holiday not just for fun um that's the truth hang on should we pose real quick for oh. an instagram thing yeah but huh. how do we get both our cameras on uh here screen- we i'll, sc- I'll screen- <clears throat> no, screenshot it. oh yeah you can screenshot okay oh, wait let me get my stomach in it <laughs> okay, hang my on. stomach takes up a lot of room nowadays screenshot hang on <laughs> it's not happening christine eva eva can you screenshot are you there oh yeah i got it oh okay ready oh good <laughs> Eva's taking a thousand pictures if you didn't hear that okay perfect okay <laughs> anyway back to our daily programming yes this is our halloween episode. back to being very professional Okay. Um, as you can see, I've also put up a bunch of um, a bunch of ghost equipment. Um, I have two EMF detectors behind me, and I also <gasps> have a Boo Buddy, which is apparently the creepiest thing in the whole world. Yes, it, like, it is. Can talk to you and stuff. I don't have it turned on because the bear does not like to shut up, and I don't know if that's because I'm not using it properly or there's a lot of ghosts. It could be um, probably the second one. Um, yeah, so the Boo Buddy says things like, what does it say? Doesn't it, you told me it says creepy, creepy stuff. It when says it, like, like if you touch its left hand, it says something versus if you touch its right hand, left. that way people can document like, oh, you can get the ghost to if go the to the left side or the right side. Paw, or, right. Yeah. 
And it's okay. but it says things like, ha ha, that tickles. Yeah, and it's, it's not like the creepiest good. thing. Um, so we're not turning it on, but it is there aesthetically as well I as I also feel like it fits your costume of like a baby. Like you have a little stuffed bear, you know? It's like a haunted stuffed bear, but You're completely right. <laughs> Oh my god, it just really weirdly goes together. I hate it. <laughs> also, how do you feel about this massive Ouija planchette? Do you like it? Uh, I adore that. Where did you get that? Also, the it's our store? it's our front door hanging currently. Well, oh, not I currently, love it because it's right here. But yeah, during Halloween, it's one of our door hangings. Amazing. I got it from Spirit, obviously. Obviously, oh, um, I adore it. So, Christine, I did want to say uh, we did this last time. Mm-hmm. I think we did this last Halloween and I wanted to keep the tradition alive, but I have a couple trivia questions for you. I wanted to <gasps> I see how many of this. them you might get right. Um, I wanted to start, uh, I was going to do multiple choice and then I forgot. So we are just going to do <laughs> you answer you your best. improv your multiple <laughs> choice. That would be fun. I can't because you're going to know which one's the right one because By I'm not going to hesitate. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I also want to add real quick, I, I brought a can of cheer wine. Where did I put it? <gasps> because I can't, because I mean, okay, while we're recording this, it's still September. It's yes. the 27th. Um, so when this comes out, I will not be pregnant anymore. Please, right. dear Lord. I don't think it's even possible. <laughs> You'll um, be a but... big old, the great big pumpkin or whatever I'll Charlie be... <laughs> Brown calls it. <laughs> I still the have that pumpkin. pumpkin sweatshirt. It'll fit. Um, but yes, so I don't, oh, here's my cheer one. So I, uh, so right now I still can't drink, but it's, we're still a month away from Halloween, but I did bring this, which is just a gigantic bag of candy. Oh, so well, next well best done. Thing. Thank well you. Well done, Christine. And I'm very oh, sad my. that I can't be drinking right now with you. I mean, you're not drinking either, but usually I take the mantle on Halloween, but, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. We got a cheer wine instead. So I'm ready to party is what I'm trying to say. Cool. I've got a big baby bottle of water that says I heart mom. So <laughs> even better. Uh, okay. So here's a couple questions. I'm just gonna throw throw a few at you. Um, I think I've already asked you this last year, but it's still fascinating. How many pounds of candy corn are produced each year? I will give oh you a hint. It's in the god. millions. Oh my god. Four million. Thirty-five million. Dear Lord. <laughs> Count. And by the way, also, it is rated the worst candy. I was so, going to say, who even eats it? So if that's being made in 35 million pounds a year, then, like, what is, like, Milky Way up to? What's Reese's I, Peanut Butter Cups? Well, I was just thinking that because, like, everybody – there was one – okay, here's the thing about candy corn is I've been trying to find – if anyone – my brother doesn't listen to the show because he sucks, but whatever. But if – so don't tell him I said this, but for – Two years now, or no, not two years, for one year now since he's been vegan, I've been trying to find him vegan candy corn because he's the only person on the planet who's obsessed with candy corn, but he can't eat it because it has honey and like gelatin usually in it. And so I've been trying to find vegan candy corn. It does not exist. Like you have to home make it and it's driving me crazy. So if anybody knows where to find it, please tell me um, and don't tell Zandy because I feel like that would be a fun. uh, Yeah, that'd be great. I also had no idea that vegan that candy corn was not vegan. I don't know what I thought it was, but yeah, I mean, I, mean, I just kind of like, stopped at it sucks. So Yeah, I don't like, I mean, nobody likes it except my vegan brother. So I don't really understand like who who the market is for 40 million or 35 million pounds of it, but ew. Uh, hmm, that's disgusting. But I hope he gets what he wants. Let's I hope that he's way. happy. <laughs> I hope he's happy while I'm disgusted. Um. <laughs> The here, here's another one. Uh, and this should be, a, I'd like to thank a low ball. Um, but what is the name of the famous magician that died on Halloween? Houdini? Yes. Okay. okay. I was like, if I'm wrong about this, M's going to kill me. <laughs> um, and then uh, I was going to. I was going to ask you this question, but I think I'm just going to do these as fun facts because it would be really mean to have you guess these. Okay. Um, the original question was, what was the movie Beetlejuice almost called? Ooh. But here is the answer for you. Would you like a fun fact, Christine? Well, can I guess? Yeah. Magical striped wizard man. No. It would have been funny if it was just a different version of Beetlejuice, like roach milk or something, Ew. you know? <laughs> oh, 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 gross. Um, it was, was it? called Scared Sheetless. Which oh. makes kind of sense because like sheets ghosts, I guess. But I guess it's pretty vague. Um, Not that Beetlejuice is the most sensical term in the world, so I guess sure. 
but I understand it. And when you think of it like roach milk, it's supposed to sound disgusting, which mm-hmm. is like what he is, right? All right. So then uh, here's another one. I was going to ask you, what did Scottish women hang to see their future husbands on Halloween? As like what a prediction game. Oh, oh, oh. They would hang something up and you should see your future husband oh, through it. Oh, oh, a, uh, I mean, my guess is a mirror, but that seems not sensical. I don't know. It seems the most sensical, yeah. Uh, but uh, to me, at least. But it's actually wet sheets in front of a fire. Cool. Ooh. <laughs> cool. I guess the shadow, but like also, you could look at any shadow and be like, "That's very that might... look how <laughs> God, he's that hot. might be it." <laughs> oh my God, he's so hot. <laughs> look at him in that wet sheet. <laughs> um, I have used this fun fact before, but not in terms of Halloween. So I just didn't know one if you listen to me, and two if you know the no. answer. Um, no. Do okay. you know how mystery flavor candy? Do you know what the mystery flavor is? Oh my god, you have told me this before. Uh, is it just? I mean, I always thought it was just the leftovers of whatever they had, but yeah. is that it? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It's good. the leftover candy from that day, all mixed together. <laughs> That's what I always thought because I was like, well, it's just has a big question mark on it, like. Yeah, it's, it's like, even most, we don't know. We don't even know what this is. I know with Airheads specifically, it's yeah. not all the flavors mixed together. It's just whatever flavor was last on the production line that oh, day. Oh, so, that's interesting. So if they made grape that day, you're getting a great mystery flavor. It's so but stupid because different... I always say that one's my favorite. But if it's different every time, then I'm just a big fat liar. Wow. It's kind of fun, though, because every flavor truly is it's a mystery different. instead yeah. of you figuring it out. I you do know? like that. I love Airheads. That's a fun fact. And then, uh, do we know how bobbing for apples started? <laughs> um, I feel like it was probably some sort of witch hunt or something terrible. I don't know. <laughs> Horses? I have no idea. No, it was actually a, like a, a dating game. <gasps> and uh, this is from history.com, by the way. Um, it was actually a dating ritual where you would go to a party with a bunch of different suitors and every apple would have a different person's <laughs> name on it and you would try to bite the apple that of the person you wanted to go on a date with. Ew. I guess before everyone else. So you had to like fight underneath the water How much with your spit faces. Do you think is in there? That's so gross. A lot. <laughs> not <Yeah>. COVID friendly. <laughs> no, certainly not. not. Um, apparently, this is a quote from history.com. If it only took her one try to bite the apple, they were destined for a romance. But if she wow. succeeded with her second attempt, then he would court her, but their love would fade. If it took three tries, their relationship was doomed. And oh. another approach was, it was just a race to the first bite of an apple. Yeah. So they were just clunking heads under the water. Ooh. <clears throat> Have you ever bought the f- apples? Yeah. I'm pretty, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is just commit, you know, but don't, I feel like they, since they're not, I've never done it, but I feel like the trick is you to have get to traction. The trick is you have to, again, like commit and throw your entire body under the water to, because like, push you have it to against a surface, push it against the mm-hmm. floor of the bucket. So then you can you gotta just really into want it. that hot guy you saw in the wet sheet. If your shoulders aren't wet after bobbing for apples, you didn't want it that bad. You just didn't saying. want that guy. You didn't. Um, and then the last one I'll give you. I think five is a safe number. Um, do you know which city out there banned trick or treating for anyone over fourteen? <laughs> is it in the U.S.? It is. Okay. Um, let's see. Hmm. My guess is somewhere in Georgia or Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the la- last year when I asked you a question, I said, which state is it illegal to be dressed as a nun or a priest? And it was like Alabama. So oh, yeah. Okay. So I, uh, yeah, close, I guess. <laughs> um, no. So uh, in Chesapeake, I think that means Chesapeake, Virginia. I might be biased that we, because we have a Chesapeake. I, it just oh. said Chesapeake. So I'm going to. Let's run with Virginia. Oh, okay. Uh, Virginia. In 2019, Chesapeake became one of the latest cities to ban trick-or-treaters for over a certain age. So I guess this is a common thing. Oh, for over a certain age. (laughs) For over 14. Oh, I misunderstood. I thought it was like, if you're a child, you can't trick-or-treat. Oh, that would be more fun for adults, I think. I Um, thought it was like like a satanic thing. They were like, this is not Christian. I thought it was like a. Oh, I, I went the wrong direction. That's why I said Mississippi. Or some would say you went the right direction. So mm, some. <laughs> um, apparently, it's a class four misdemeanor, and you could be fined up to two hundred fifty dollars. Well, that's sad if you turn areas. fourteen and you're an eighth grader with some naivete still, like I was, and I just want to trick or treat. Um, I actually, I'll throw a bonus one in there. Do you know what? I'll give you. You can pick one of the five. Do you know what one of the top five most 
popular Halloween costumes last year was. One of the top five. Yes. I'm trying to remember from when I threw candy from 10 feet away at children. <laughs> it's well, it's much more. Oh, sorry. Top Halloween costumes for adults. Oh, oh. In 2020. Okay. So lazy costumes. And it was also quarantine. So, oh my God, what would have been? It's as basic as you think it is. A nurse. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what's the most basic costume? Uh, with COVID, I guess all the supplies might have been. Maybe that was a little too on the nose. Um, what's like a ra- let's say what's like a, like a, a main cat. character on Halloween? Yeah. Oh, cat. okay. It was witch, vampire, cat, ghost, Batman. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> really came out of the sewers, I thought we were going to so. go clever quarantine, but no. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there's some uh, hot Halloween trivia for you, I guess. How old were you when you stopped trick-or-treating? Um, I would have kept on going forever, but there was one year I felt shame because I was alone. And I was like, oh, all my other friends are probably not trick-or-treating. And you were tall, too. Like, I feel like you could hide it if you, like, looked youth, like, really small. I was, then. I've been this height since fifth grade. <laughs> so, um, I definitely looked like by 10, I shouldn't be trick-or-treating anymore. Um, I think, I think the official year was, like, 13. Okay. Oh my God. I trick or treated until I was 17. Like, how? Sad. I love trick or treating. It was I did so too. fun. And, like, not ironically, like, I really just wanted to go trick or treat. <laughs> if someone <laughs> ever came to my dorm wanted candy, I would give it to them. It doesn't even have to be Halloween. And it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be young <laughs> oh, like, either. Em's if you're just get like kidnapped by a creepy man in a van. <laughs> no, no, no. If you want candy, not if I want your van candy. <laughs> okay. That's your different. Van candy. Okay. <laughs> well, fair. Um, well, and then in college, I still skirted the system because. Allison and Jordan and I, our other third roommate, went trick or treating um, on Embassy Row in DC. So they oh, do like fun. A, it was they really do a cool. whole thing. Yeah, and every embassy has like their lo- a national candy, and they so hand it fun. Out. It was really cool. It's so very I guess, you and Allison too. I know, right? It was like <laughs> the most me and Allison thing ever. Um, and I was a Freudian slip. So well, um, I've seen that before. And Allison was a oh yeah, very right, duh. And then Allison was a ladybug. Um, so fun Sweet. times. Stinky witch, so cute. Okay, so um, congratulations on your embassy candy. I did not Thank ever you. do that. I just fun. did the, the old school pillowcase neighborhood thing and then also got shamed at some point at 13. So, yeah, I tri- Oh, I was Michael idea. Jackson when I was 17, and then I was like, this is getting weird. I'm <laughs> I need to not do this anymore. Was there ever an outfit you were very proud of? Oh man, one time, <laughs> um, I did a good lumberjack. Oh. I don't know, I, I feel like. Ah, oh, shoot. I got to go look. What about you? I'm trying to remember um, what my favorite was. I feel like I was a vampire like five times in a row. Oh, really? I did a good uh, mad scientist at one point. Oh, I bet that was good. You would you would pull that off really well. My my mom, it was I was a kid. So my mom nailed it. My mom also one time like handmade me a costume. And then I think she was like, you don't appreciate this. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> yeah. <So laughs> my mom only made me costumes because she refused to buy them out of the catalogs. Yeah. Well, anyway, so there you go. I'd say maybe mad scientist. That's a good one. Anyway. Oh, I almost knocked this whole thing over. Um, okay, so I've got... You are a baby, so no one can be mad at you. Wah! Okay, so I've got... <laughs> gross, gross, gross. <laughs> All right, Christine, here is your story. This is a two-parter. Yay! Um, this, I know it's Halloween and I should be giving you the whole shebang, but let's just say I want to lure you into next week. Okay, um, oh, so, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and you also, I'm trying by lure you. I don't mean the audience. I mean you. Please don't have the baby yet, and I'm stick around to best. find out the rest of the story. I've tried so hard to have the baby that at this point I'm like, whatever, fine, Just let's ride it out. Hold in for a little longer. So, okay. um, this is, uh, hmm, okay. Trying to figure out how to introduce it, but I'm just gonna do my old wing it thing. This is the story of the Harrisville Farmhouse, Ooh. aka the Perrin family haunting, <gasps> aka hey. the inspiration for the first Conjuring movie, aka how have I not covered this yet? I you haven't, have you? No, oh at God, least so not excited. as thoroughly as I'm about to, because like, wow, I this is a two parter. I didn't go to sleep, Christine. Uh-oh. I. I've been researching all night. I've been watching all the videos. I've been on TikTok. It's been all over the place. So you're a hardworking baby. That's yeah. why why that's okay. So um, you need a new tagline. I can't deal with that. 
<laughs> um, also, by the way, I could not be sweating more. Just I, like you look, I'm hot just looking at you, and I'm in a tank top. I, I can't. The deal. second that I rip this off, a pool of sweat will just fall right off me. Cute. Um. So anyway, <laughs> let's. Oof, a little fuzzy. There, this is the Perrin family haunting, and I realized I hadn't covered it when I was covering Ed and Lorraine Warren a couple weeks ago. Um, so they will be featured in this next week. Oh my Uh-oh. god, I'm so excited! Uh oh, okay. uh oh. So uh, the property, which by the way is in Harrisville, Rhode Island, it goes all the way back to the 1600s. It was surveyed by John Smith himself. Oh, um, and the land was eventually sold to the Arnold family. Um, who we will remember as characters later. So because uh, the Arnold family lived here, they ended up living here for a long time, and the house was originally called the Old Arnold Estate. Mm. And at one point it was also called the Old Brook Farm, and it was originally called the Dexter Richardson House. I guess the Richardsons were the first people to move in. Okay. Um, But it's mainly known as the Old Arnold Estate. It's also now known as the Conjuring House. So, <laughs> um, it has so a, it's listen. It's a Gemini. It has a lot of personalities. You can just call it whatever you want, and it'll probably come to you. So, uh, in Harrisville, Rhode Island, it is January 1971, and the Parent family is parents uh, parents Carolyn and Roger. And they've got four daughters named Andrea, Nancy, Christine, hey. Cynthia, and April. Lovely. Um, you're going to learn a lot about Andrea in this story, by the way. Okay. So I do want to give her a shout out um, because she like could not be more active still doing interviews. And she's written three books about this. And she is oh, willing wow. to answer any and all questions. She guest starred on a Ghost Adventures episode. Oh, so yeah. she... Like, she's made it her calling of, like, telling people her story. According to her, nobody remembers feeling or sensing anything paranormal about the house until they officially moved in that day. Um, they had been to the house and, like, checked out the property, That's but never sneaky, felt though. anything. That's mm-hmm. sneaky of the house to be like, no, I'm fine. And then... And she does talk about that, too, where it's, like, it, it felt very intentional that these yeah. spirits brought them in. Because so. looked when I was looking for houses, I remember being, like... This house has a weird vibe. Like, I remember you could definitely tell when you walk into a place and if it doesn't have any weird vibe and then you move in and you're like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. That just then seems unfair. feels super creepy. It does. So, I'll, uh, like I said, in hindsight, <laughs> she knew something was up. And now looking back at it, too, she remembers the seller's last words to them were, leave the lights on at night. <laughs> Okay. All right. So like, Sneaky even, little seller. Even the seller was like, um, here are the keys. You can't turn back. Um, leave the lights on at night. That is unfair to say without any explanation. So when Andrea was 12, uh, that was when they moved in. And the first moment of living in that house, they all had an experience. Oh. So I guess the guy selling them the house or the guy who lived in the house before them or was renting or something, he had like stuff at the house and he was there packing his stuff up while they were moving in. So I don't know if he was just kind of like hanging out until Hovering. it officially sold. Yeah, I don't know. He's but like, I want was... every last second of what I paid for. <laughs> I guess so. But also, why would you after you hear this story? I guess so, yeah. So uh, his name was Mr. Kenyon. And apparently, so Andrea's 12 and the dad says, Andrea, go take this box into the kitchen. So Andrea is taking this box, walking through the dining room and sees Mr. Kenyon was standing there and there was another guy with him that was, like, watching him collect all of his stuff. Um, the other man did not acknowledge Andrea at all. And Andrea thought about him. Do people around here really dress that odd? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and she ended up getting to the kitchen and asked her mom, who was the man that was with Mr. Kenyon. And the mom was like, there's nobody here. Like, it's just him. The, the, his son's going to be here later, but he's not here yet. Um, and so just kind of got, I guess, ignored or pushed aside because they were kind of in the hustle and bustle of moving. Right. And so she didn't even think about it. She was just like, oh, it's like, it was, no one's here. You're, you know, whatever. Well, then I guess uh, their, 
her sister Christine then walked in and said, Mom, who's that guy standing next uh, to Mr. Kenyon? Uh, and the mom again was like, there's no one here. What are you guys talking about? Just keep keep moving boxes. And then the sister Cindy came in and asked the same question. Now and this then, is like a sitcom. Okay. <laughs> and then Nancy came in and whispered to the sisters and was like, did you see that man with Mr. Kenyon? Because he just disappeared. Ah. <laughs> So in the first moment of being there, four out of five sisters all And of course, it's sobbed. all the kids, which is just like, great. The mom doesn't see it. The kids do. Oh, no. And they all knew something was up when they when Andrea saw the man. Oh, I just got chills thinking about it. Also, pay attention to these little Oh, I haven't even been looking. Uh, this one's supposed to be blinking like that. It's next to something with a heavy battery. Just so you Okay. Know. Okay. Yeah. We got the EMF readers going if you're if it, listening audio wise. Yes. 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 We'll tell you if anything happens. Don't worry. You'll hear Christine go, ah! <laughs> Actually, you'll um, probably hear me. You'll see me go like, hey, okay, can, I, uh, can I have a minute? <laughs> um, so they also knew that something was up with this man because when her dad went to go talk to Mr. Kenyon and the man was standing there, their dad didn't actually acknowledge the guy at all, but the girls could see him. Ugh. So it was like they were, it was kind of like in the movie It. I know you haven't seen that, but if you watch the movie It, it's like when the parents are ignoring that they're in like a room full of blood and like the kids are freaking out that the dad's like washing his hands in the sink full of blood. Like it's like the, they're just completely unaware. And they're oblivious. Uh, so oblivious. And so Andrew was like, I knew something was up when my dad didn't notice him and I was looking right at him. And uh. apparently he was like a solid dude. Like, like they Andrew thought he was, was like, a real guy, right? Like I could just walk up and touch him if i want to poke his booty <laughs> poke his booty if you want to booty happy halloween <laughs> okay so <laughs> so uh yeah i got ignored all day just because they were moving and the parents didn't really pay attention to the girls um but as you can tell as you mentioned already the spirits immediately took to the kids first and mm. soon they were all seeing apparitions the weird thing about this house that's also pretty consistent is everything happens so fucking fast like the second they moved in they felt right. something later when other things kind of get eerier it happens right away like it just it's there's no waiting around they're like let's it's time to fuck around and there's find no like out escalation with it's they're like yeah. slow escalation it's like bam yeah zero to sixty yeah, so like day one, they see this dude hanging out in the dining room. Ugh. And then right away, they start seeing apparitions who are like hanging out with them as like family friends. Ew. So it's not just like they're walking by. It's like they're hanging out with them. So pretty quickly, the girls could see one apparition named Manny, or they nicknamed him Manny. Um, Andrea says, quote, my little sister was not inventive with nicknames and he was a man. So <laughs> That was my guess. Yeah, yeah I love it. So they think Manny was actually most likely to be John Arnold, one of the Arnold pe the family members who lived there. Apparently right. he died from drinking some sort of poison, which was, I guess in small doses, was able to get you drunk without killing you. Oh, no. And they think John Arnold just accidentally drank too much and killed himself by accident. Oh, no. Um, I just said accident a lot. I just noticed. <laughs> but uh, Andrea s swears, she's like, I know that the coroners, like, they listed his death as a suicide, but we hung out with him all the time. And, like, we know that he wouldn't have done that on purpose. Like, it was... They were <laughs> Wait, this is, like, next level of, like, he would never have done this. Like, he, we know he's a ghost and we've never actually met him, but... They were like, he, it, they were like, it was definitely accidental. He probably just wanted to get a little fucked up and just overdosed. These kids are like, no, he loves to get fucked up. That's what you don't understand. <laughs> uh, and this is a quote from Andrea. She says, I had a close thing with him and he showed up at the house a lot. We referred to him as more like a member of the family. And I never had the sense that he tried to kill himself. And I don't care what the coroner's report said. <laughs> well, and I mean, honestly, if you're that confident, like. I believe yeah, you. shit. I'm going to trust the person who's been hanging out with the dead man this whole time who like, could have gotten that information out. So like the, truly just like I imagine this guy is just coming in, just like hanging out on the bed with you, talking it up, up a storm like and he's a dead person. And another apparition happened very quickly where for the first two months after they moved in, the girls all said that a woman they didn't know would come in and kiss them on the forehead each night Ugh. to like say good night. Oh, no, 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 no. Andrea said, mom smelled like ivory soap and this spirit smelled like flowers and fruit. And one of the okay. other sisters, I think Cynthia said, like, we knew it wasn't our mom. But when you're a little kid, you kind of just like roll over and just you're like, oh, someone else was here. And right. it's just good night. So they just ignored it. 
at this point they're like we have so many family friends i guess I know. just kind of waltzing through par for the course so the spirits would also mess with the girls' toys, which eventually made the sisters actually start fighting when they thought that they were taking each Aww. other's stuff. And that was kind of like the first, if you can, I'm imagining that was the first version of anything sinister where like right. it was turning them against each other. Their toys would get moved around or they would get hidden like in the barn or under the bed. And the sisters started fighting a lot, but then their mom made them talk about the golden rule of like, treat people how you want to be treated. And that was when Cindy started sharing her toys with anyone who came into her room. <gasps> She's like, mom said, Oh yep. no. Oh no. One toy that they didn't like of hers that she, I guess was willing to share with them was a record player called the close and play where it was just kind of like pop it open. It the was like a one. CD player. Yeah. Pop it open, put the record and close it. And it plays kids. The CD player is like an, a newfangled record uh -huh. player. You don't know, understand any of these words. It's okay. A CD player is just half a record player. You don't have to flip <laughs> it over. So, yeah, one of the toys they did not like of hers was her close and play record player. Apparently they broke it, and they also broke the record she was playing in it, which was her favorite record at the time. It's not nice. Um, and a lot of the spirits here, the girls just got used to them so quickly that they kind of assumed they were harmless, but some got creepy right away. Uh-oh. So on top of these other things that are happening all the time, just like Manny walking in and out and girls kissing you on the forehead. Um, <laughs> what a fun time. Cindy, apparently, I uh, one, one time Andrea, I heard Andrea have all, in a lot of interviews. One of them, she said this was the very first night they moved in, um, said that Cindy would crawl into her bed at night saying the voices are surrounding her, oh, telling her that there are seven dead soldiers in the wall. Forgot. Uh, no. Ugh, that makes me ill. So Andrea did say later, she was like, the house was built 40 years before the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Mm. Like, there's so many battles that have happened around here. And she said, I have every reason to believe there are, in fact, bodies in the wall. <laughs> like, why uh, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I do so, too now. I mean, geez. Honestly, I'm just going to trust all of these children. Me too. Um, so Andrea also said when you would hear door latches clicking around the house, they had like memorized every single door's latch opening because then they would at least know like who was coming from where. And you never knew if it was your parent or a sibling or nobody yeah. or something really dark. And they just kind of lived in this constant state of anxiety of like, am I about to like have to deal with a ghost or is like my sister saying it's time for dinner? Or so, she's saying there's bodies in the wall. You never or know. Or there's bingo. So oh. she was just always on edge. Um, and apparently there was one spirit that would call out mama at night. Mm. It was me. <laughs> it was you. And I was like <laughs> plugging my ears like, no. Nope. <laughs> um, apparently people would hear voices, footsteps, banging, doors would open and close. They experienced an overwhelming sadness. Apparently, mm -hmm. no matter who you were, if you were there long enough, you'd start feeling really sad. One sister ended up becoming friends with one of the apparitions who was a little boy named Oliver Richardson. And the Richardsons Aww. were the family who first moved in in the 1600s. 1600s. Um, oh, my God. I know. And apparently there was also a father and child with their dog. And all three of them had died on the premises. But mm. now their spirits were all together looking. What, they, what Andrea says is, like, they're probably looking out a window from when they had a window <gasps> there. But it just looks like they're staring at a wall. It's How very creepy. Creepy is that? And they will not interact with you. They, it's like they're just kind of a residual. Like they're just looking out the window together, and that's that it. That is horrible. That's like that blueprint theory where they're stuck in their own old house, mm -hmm. kind of, sort of. Oh my god! Oh, I hate that so much. <laughs> well, so remember the blueprint theory later too, because that comes oh, okay. back. Um. We might have to, I forget where the notes are in this, but we might have to bring that up next It's fascinating week, so. to me, this whole blueprint thing. So, uh, some people oh, also like... I found this. Sorry, I was digging through the candy. I found this baby bottle that? pop. Oh, I love a baby bottle so, pop. Remember um, when the Jonas Brothers were the ones who sang the baby bottle pop theme yes. song? <laughs> baby bottle pop. Baby baby pop. Oh, children, Gen X, you don't know what that is either, but listen, it's okay. <laughs> you missed out on a lot. It's okay. It was it was Nick Jonas before Red Dress. So <laughs> I don't even know if that's relevant anymore. No, no, probably so, not. <laughs> uh, so some people with all these spirits, some people had it easier with the spirits than others. So like 
Andrea uh, said in an interview that she could just basically tell them to leave if they were bothering her and they'd listen. But there were other people that got taunted a lot more. I imagine Cindy was one of them just because she was more open to that and was like sharing her toys and stuff. Another was Cynthia. Let's just all collectively like just cheers to Cynthia because it sounds like she's really been through it. Uh Um, So, I mean, they've all been through it, but Cynthia in particular sounds pretty Is she the one who heard the voices? That, or was that Cindy? I think Cindy. Which voice are you talking about? Mm. Sorry, the voice is saying there are seven bodies. That was Cindy, I think. Okay. I think. I don't know. I, the Cynthia and Cindy was a, was a bad call in naming your children. It's very confusing. I can't keep up. Um, <laughs> oh, that was, that was Cindy. That was Cindy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Control F dead bodies. <laughs> Listen, I, the amount I do that on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so Cynthia was uh, in bed. And this is just one of the times where she was getting taunted by these things. Uh, Oh, okay. So she was actually upstairs playing when the closet door opened and she thought one of her siblings was going to come out, but it was an older woman with her head tilted to the side. Ugh! this is like that fucking haunting of Hill house. She had lady. She had a gray dress with yellow flowers and an apron, and she was holding a handkerchief. And as far as uh, Cynthia saw, there were no feet. And she could hear the woman telepathically saying, come to me, little girl. (gasps) (gasps) I hate that so much. Oh, no. (laughs) No, Goose cam. Goose cam. Another night, she saw something hovering over one of the beds. And moments later, it was dragging her out of bed. (gasps) She kept blinking like, what is that I see? What's that What's that weird shadow thing? And then she was getting ripped out of her bed and dragged towards the cellar. <gasps> no. Bad. Cynthia uh, was also once in bed when the bed itself was dragging all over the floor and levitating in the air. Mm-mm. So she was lying down. She woke up. Her bed is flip-flopping everywhere You in can't this even, room. like, leave the room because you're stuck on that flying carpet bed. I, and she was... The, she remembers being really pissed that her mom wouldn't come help her because, Aww. quote from Cynthia, the house somehow had a way of kind of bubbling your scream. <gasps> there were Ugh. times... There were times that we would be upstairs screaming our lungs out and the person could be right downstairs and you'd never hear a word. I was wondering, because I was like, if the bed's scraping all over the floor, you think you'd hear it, but I guess not if your screams are being bubbled. Nope. So not only would it keep you from getting help, but another thing it would do is it would throw voices and put people in trances. Oh, so it'd be like, you're across the hall. but you'd Or be like, like you're downstairs. not home at all and you just hear yeah. Ooh. the person talking to you. That's not good. So it was mimicking voices. Is probably a better way to put it. Right. Um, So one thing that a lot of people remember from the Conjuring movie itself was the hide and seek game where you would close your eyes and you would have to find someone by with them clapping. Ugh. So you. I've never seen this movie, obviously. So I'm like, wow. (laughs) (laughs) So it was you'd close your eyes if you were the seeker, and the person would be hiding, but they would clap to give you like a like a Marco Polo thing. Yeah, or like hot and cold situation of like, oh, I'm over here. I'm over here. Um, and in the movie, they're playing hide and seek. And then all of a sudden, like they hear a clap and no one's there Mm. and like things like that. So apparently that idea was, I'm guessing inspired by the fact that the girls would actually play hide and seek in this house. And they ended up getting into some ghostly trouble while playing hide and seek. So Cynthia, again, this poor fucking girl, she decided that she was going to hide one day in this wooden box that had no latch. It had no heavy lid. It was just like a lightweight thing that she could get in and out of. And I'm assuming had gotten in and out of before. And like you cannot you're not getting trapped in this box situation. But she hid in the box or in this trunk. And eventually she realized, oh, I guess the game's over and no one's looking for me. So I'm just going to get out of the box and leave. It's like a but younger sibling curse every time. I, also an only child curse. Okay, like, also an only child curse. <laughs> no one even started the game with That's me. That's <laughs> sad. That's extra sad. I would just hide for no one. Oh, it is so sad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, eventually when uh, Cynthia realized no one was looking for her, she tried to get out of the box 
and someone was holding her no, in. No, 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 no. It felt like someone was sitting on the box. There was no way she could get out of there. She screamed forever, and she was within screaming distance, but nobody could hear her. <gasps> Um, and apparently she like almost suffocated in there for being in there so long without air holes and screaming so much. She's probably like using a yeah. polar. Uh, oh my God. And probably hyperventilating. Oh when my God. When they pulled her out, apparently she was soaking wet from just like sweat and crying. It's really Poor sad. baby. Um, and she was eight years old. That's traumatic. Time. Fully traumatic. Yeah. It, I'm almost 30 and I would have, I would lose my fucking Absolutely. mind if that happened. Can you That's imagine like being a eight coffin. years old? Yeah. <sighs> And so uh, this happened another time to Christine instead of Cynthia. Oh, no. Not um, Christine. Even creepier because this one involves throwing voices. And all of the sisters apparently were downstairs and the mom, Carolyn, was there. They were all making sandwiches for lunch. And all of a sudden they realized that Christine had vanished. They were mm. like, where the fuck did Christine go? I'm sure as a, a, the 12-year-old said that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you said that. You say it a lot. Where the fuck did Christine go? Eva. <laughs> Is she paying again? Everyone starts freaking out looking for her. They're like, go check the go check outside. Every, you know, everyone's kind of like scattering around looking for her. And they find her upstairs trapped in a box. <gasps> and when they pull her out, Christine is freaking out and like even like shoves the mom away and is like, why would you do that to me? <gasps> and the mom is like, what are you talking about? I was downstairs with everyone else. And Christine says she fell asleep on the bed and Carolyn, her mom, came in the room and told her to get in the box. I am, no, no. But Christine apparently didn't know for sure that it, she thought for sure it was Carolyn, but she wasn't sure because when she was woken up by Carolyn's voice and told to get in the box, she felt completely frozen and could not move and couldn't open her eyes. All she could do was hear the voice. Oh, my God. So whatever was there was keeping her from being able to open her eyes and run. So how did she get in the box? So with her eyes closed and completely still, something lifted her off the bed and put her in this box. And I guess it was also an easy lid she should have been able to get out of, but she was also stuck in there. This is so bad. I'm so freaked out right now. It had her mother's voice and also creepily, it kept calling it the box when what her mom always called it was the antique trunk. <gasps> so for her mom to like, also like, it wasn't it even feels, like what her mom called it. Ugh. It feels like a black eyed kid situation where they were trying to sound like, the, yeah, they tried to sound correct and they were still kind of off. Oh, so it's like oh, if so your mom creepy. always calls it the antique trunk and now she's saying get in the box. It's just extra. Creepy. Do we know? Is it something like they had or, like, was it original to the house or was it like something? I think it was brought? just I think it was just something of theirs. They just brought with them. Yeah. Um, so even though all of this scary, but seemingly maybe non evil spirits, even though those were all there, there was one specifically dark entity in this house. And the parents refuse to talk about it. I think maybe Andrea talked about it in her book a little bit, but they like don't talk about it. And Andrea did say, quote, let's just say there was a very bad male spirit in the home with five little girls. (laughs) So kind of a you do the math situation. Dear God. Oh, no. Um, Also about a dozen... they said on they if they had a guess between ten and twelve entities were frequently at the house. Um, I don't know if this like super malevolent one was one of them, but they said there was like a good dozen spirits they were just familiar with at all times. Horrible. Um, while this is all happening, by the way, because that's just the kids, and they're like not telling their parents about this stuff unless like they get found out like being trapped in a box. But they're not talking about like oh Manny is hanging out with us and right. Our little sister's friends with one of the original Richardson boys. Like, they're not talking about that stuff. So while that's all happening to the girls, Carolyn, the mom, is having her own evil experiences. Um, You okay? Yeah. Okay. I thought I thought you froze for a second and I went, oh, dear God. No, sorry. Sometimes when I eat, I, like, do this, like, horrible freeze frame where my (laughs) eyes don't blink. So that's probably what happened. I can't wait for your baby to also do that. It'll freak you the fuck out every time. Blaze is not going to love it. (laughs) So uh, while this is all happening, Carolyn is having her own experiences and the spirits seem to be most threatened by her. So she's getting the real brunt of it. So is it just the mom and the kids? 
It's or also there... the dad. So the dad's oh. Roger, and he apparently like didn't believe any of this for a long time. Great. Okay. Go figure. Yeah. Um, I there were there was some differing notes that I found on different sources. Some said that he was aware of it, but didn't have a problem with it because he was only like they were only treating him nicely oh great there was another one where like he didn't know for a long time there was another one where he ignored it there was another one where he felt uncomfortable but was aware and just didn't talk about it right so i'm gonna go on the assumption that like he was just kind of like blase and unaware until real shit started happening sure and so when this was all happening carol was having her own stuff and andrea says quote We started seeing changes in my mother, and she did not divulge to us what was happening. She was having outrageous things happen to her, but Mm -hmm. she did not tell her five little children, obviously. Um, So for Carolyn, it started with hearing, like, the broom sweeping, which, okay, that sounds pretty dope. Like, do my chores. And then... I'd be like, my kids don't (laughs) sweep, I imagine. My dishes are dirty, too. Um, You can do those next. (laughs) Um. She would see the broom or other items moving around. They heard scraping and shuffling. Um, But soon the family was starting to smell, especially Carolyn. And I think this is where the dad started noticing something. They started waking up to the smell of rotting flesh. (gasps) Yeah. What a weird thing to wake up to also. One article said it was every day at 5.15 a.m. Yuck. Uh, Also, their hair and their legs were getting pulled. And they had a lot of bat. Like hundreds of bats every night. Ew. Ew, ew, ew. I guess in the movie they did kind of the same thing with crows, and they said we did have crows, but the bigger problem was bats. Um, and they also said one of the bigger problems was flies, which is super demonic. Yep. Um, Andrea said in an interview, Oh my god, the flies. Bot flies by the millions. The <laughs> bot flies are only found around corpses. And when we moved into the house, we Moved in in the middle of winter. We moved in during a snowstorm. So there like, shouldn't have been fucking flies. Oh, no. And within a day, there were big, fat, black, fuzzy flies. And they oh. were by the thousands. We had an exterminator out twice, but he could not find a breeding place anywhere in the house for them. That's and then bad. even creepier, Christine, is later when the family started talking about all their experiences, all the flies dropped dead at the same time. <gasps> <laughs> okay yuck um first of all yuck (laughs) second of all i don't mean like gross about bats in general i just mean an infestation of bats has got to be very scary for people i mean like it's like living in like uh, like dracula's castle i imagine (laughs) (laughs) the flies Um, that are supposed to be around dead bodies no bueno i don't like like they're they're well also they're showing up i guess they're before they're showing up in a house that's also smelling right like rotting flesh yeah exactly I wonder um, how they all died at once. That's a that's bizarre. That's so really bizarre. Lorraine Warren's theory is that they were harbingers of something to come. <sighs> and they maybe weren't actually real, but they right. were kind of a hallucinogen. And <gasps> right. they were announcing, this is a quote, they were announcing to you, the mortals in the house, the presence of the spirits. <laughs> okay, and, wow. <laughs> and when you acknowledged what was, because they dropped dead when they all started talking about what was going on with each other. And when you acknowledged what was happening in the house, their work was done. That's heinous. Heinous. As heinous. you like to say, yuck. <laughs> Yucko. Uh, <laughs> um, also, I love that you said hallucinogen instead of hallucination. I know. I know. <laughs> like they're eating it. <laughs> I wrote it out, though, just so you know, until you've s- speed bumped me and let me know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, by the way, do you hear that bumping? No. Well, now it's gone as soon as I said that. Um, oh my god like the flies they're a harbinger of doom (laughs) yes the bowling ball sized flies are jumping (laughs) everywhere (laughs) um (laughs) that's true demonic shit right there by the way though right yeah so uh eventually this is where things get real rough Uh so eventually andrea has a dream and I, it feels kind of like an astral projection situation because she's hovering over or standing in the room where Carolyn and Roger are sleeping, where her mm. parents are sleeping. It's in the middle of the night and above her mom, Andrea sees a woman with no hands, <gasps> but sticks under her sleeves <gasps> who knew Andrea could see her <gasps> hovering over her mom and her dad. In the meantime, looked very scratched up like he was attacked by an animal and 
Roger was, a, so even though he looked attacked, he was, I guess, sleeping next to Carolyn, but Carolyn could see this woman. So a- Andrea is seeing the mom awake, seeing the same thing. Okay. While the oh, dad so is they as- awake. Okay. She sees her dad either asleep or looking real fucking dead because he looks attacked by something. Jesus. And the mom is awake seeing this woman with sticks for arms staring at her. And the the woman with sticks for arms knows that the daughter can also see it. Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, oh, that's so f- fucking weird. So I guess uh, Carolyn, who was seeing this woman floating above her, was trying to get her husband's attention, but he was... She thought he might be dead or something because he was not waking up. And it could have been that like weird experience that people say they have with like sleep paralysis where like you're screaming for help and nobody can hear you or like maybe it bubbled the sound or the experience. Right. But she was like grabbing at him and he wasn't moving. So he like was completely like in a trance and unaware of what was going on or she thought he was dead and she was next. How scary. Um. And so, yeah, Andrea does a great job describing all this. There's two interviews on YouTube uh, with a, I just want to give them a shout out. It was a a channel called 757 Paranormal, Mm -hmm. um, which I think is also in Virginia because 757 is one of our area codes. Oh, so um, uh, they did two hour long interviews with her. And that's where I got a lot of this information. So shout out. Um, And so she's seeing all this happen. She's seeing her mom like struggle to like wake her dad up. Um, and the next morning, Andrea goes downstairs and sees her mom drawing something and she's drawing that woman. (gasps) And she says, mom, like, we haven't talked about this stuff yet, but like, be honest with me. What's, did that happen to you last night? And Carolyn said, yes. And then her dad came downstairs and his back was all scratched. (gasps) (laughs) Another night, Carolyn wakes up to the smell of smoke. And no one else is awake. This is all Carolyn's story. She wakes up to the smell of smoke and she sees two tall apparitions at the foot of her bed. And then a woman enters the room. (gasps) This woman had a snapped neck (gasps) where her head was hanging off of her body. No, it's the bent neck lady. She was holding a torch and in a very intimidating voice started chanting this incantation this is the long version that I heard Andrea recite at one point in one of her interviews. This was what this woman was chanting. "'Twas mistress once before ye came, and mistress here will be anon, will drive ye with fiery broom, and drive ye mad with gloom." Jesus, what? <laughs> what? Which I guess was saying, like, I was the woman of the house before you get out. We'll do whatever we have to to get you out of here. Like, just you are not welcome here. Basically, you're not welcome here. (gasps) And then I don't know if this was at the same time. One of the one of the sources made it seem like it happened right after this chanting. Another source said it happened um, on a different day. But Carolyn felt something stab her in the leg. (gasps) Well, okay. Oh no. Uh And they ended up saying it was perfectly circle as if like a sewing needle had impaled her. Ew. Was the quote. Perfectly circle as if a sewing needle had impaled her. Um, And so it wasn't like a weird stab or cut. It was exactly a circle. And after this, I don't know if it was because like they had like gotten inside of her body at all by the stabbing motion or whatever. But after this, Carolyn started rapidly declining she was super tired all the time she was super like they said she was like withering away um they said she was like girl what is sorry i'm sneezing so i have to keep muting myself i thought you were laughing i was like this is not a game (laughs) (laughs) christy no no i promise i uh i keep sneezing but i have to mute myself so i like do this whole rigmarole (laughs) and i didn't want to interrupt and like here i am like doing worse than interrupting like literally creating the whole (laughs) diversion do you need a minute so Um, sorry about that i'm trying to also turn my phone on do not disturb but i have the new update have you gotten Mm. the new update and it's like i'm I'm very confusing so i'm trying to no you're good Gio's getting picked up from his haircut so they keep texting me so sweet he's gonna look so handsome em 
I love him. He was so good when I saw him. His sweet he kiss, his misses sweet you face. so much. So, uh, yeah, so she was in rapid decline. Apparently, she was, like, aging very quickly. That's it was very creepy. It was almost like now that they had made, like, physical contact with her, <gasps> they were, like, sucking the energy out of her. I mean, they're literally and, stabbing her, too. Like, I wouldn't feel good either. Yeah, no, I would not. Uh, Carolyn then decides, she's like, I need to look up the history of this house. What the fuck is going on around here? Mm -hmm. And while looking through the area's public record, she sees that there were eight generations of the Arnold family, the family that lived there forever. Eight generations of them lived here, and many of them died on the property in very weird ways. Um, Some of them died uh, in ways including suicide. There was Mm -hmm. apparently multiple suicides. Um, there was an attempted murder of an 11 year old after a sexual assault on the 11 year old. There was typhus drownings. One of the neighbors died from exposure after he passed out drunk. Um, just a lot of death. And Andrea was quoted saying virtually every entity we were able to name had as living beings either died by their own hand or died so traumatic a death and so sudden a death that they didn't seem to know they were dead. That is terrifying. Oh, I just got goose cam. And then they're like, why are you in my house? Yes, that is going to be important later with that with the blueprint theory. Good call, Ooh, Christine. Ooh, I'm so freaked out. Em. <laughs> so uh, one of the allegedly dark things to happen here was the murder of a baby for satanic rituals. Oh, my God. What? So I said allegedly because we don't actually know. There was, a, there was a baby who died on the property, and the rumor kind of spilled out that it was... Um, one of the neighbors was named Bathsheba Sherman. Wow, what a name. What a name. And Bathsheba Sherman apparently was, um, or I think, I don't know if Bathsheba, because she ends up being the main spirit in the Conjuring I was going to say, haven't you mentioned that name before? I feel like I remember. I think in the Ed and Lorraine one I did. Yeah, because I remember commenting like with the last name Sherman. And then you like, Bathsheba. <laughs> it's like, what a combination. I don't know if that was, I think that was her name in real life too, but her, her maiden name was Thayer. Okay. I think. Bathsheba Thayer. That's a lot. That's, I hope you don't have a lisp. That would I know. be a terrible curse. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so they, I think the rumor just kind of spilled out that she was a witch in the area. And I, I think the way that the, the notes made sense to me was that she was actually watching a baby on the Oof. property and the baby did die in her care and they kind of turned it into a much more horrific Sinister version. Thing. Right. Yeah. Um, which like, to be fair, I don't know. She could have been a murderer. She could have been, but also it was like the early 1800s or mid 1800s and babies just die sometimes. So I don't, I don't know if there was a, a disease going on. I mean, there was already typhus and or other an ways accident, of people, you know, an accident. Yeah. So we don't know, but there was apparently a baby who died in her care Tragic. on the property. And the story became that she was a local witch who killed the baby, um, in exchange for like a pact with the devil to have everlasting beauty or something. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah. Yikes. Was Bathsheba um, beautiful forever? Cause that would answer that question. I don't know. <laughs> and like, I want to see her at 95. Like, why do baby. I feel like a man created that? Um, why do I feel like a man? It's like, it must be eternal beauty. That's the only thing a woman would kill what for. What else would a vain, vain lady want? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Apparently she killed the baby by stabbing it in the neck with a with a needle. Oh, oh, oh. Like a sewing needle? Like some say it, it could arguably be the same needle that but, from beyond right. stabbed Carolyn. Fucking hell. That's so, dark. um either again, different sources had different stories, so I'm not sure on the truth here, but either there was no actual trial and this is all a fucking rumor or they actually she was like brought to court on this and they ended up deciding there was no solid evidence to hold her, but because of the story going around, the public already hated her anyway for right. the rest of time. Right. So either she ended up just being hated. Uh, there are also rumors that she had four kids and three of them didn't make it past infancy. Um, mm. But they use that as backing up the fact that she'd killed babies for oh. Satan. Okay. That's not versus fair. like, hey, you could have just had three babies pass away in yeah. the 1800s. 
Um, and people are turning it against you. Oh, yeah. Like, can you imagine? Like, she already no. lost three of her fucking babies. Yikes. The argument against that, too, is like she had like, why was the fourth baby worth keeping? And like he grew up and got married and everything. So like, oh, so she had. Right. So, OK, whatever. why was that one not like was she done with her pact at that point? I don't know. So uh, she. La, 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 la. There's also no proof that she was actually a practicing witch at the time. This could just all become part of the lore. Right. Although one of the people that Carolyn talked to in her research was a historian who actually did know Bathsheba when he was a boy. And he said that she was a bitter, evil woman. And uh, he did not like her. He At the point, at the time that he met her, she was already in her 70s and was just like a really nasty person. Um, there's also rumors that she had farm hands on her property that she like tortured. Oh, um, God. But again, I don't know how real that is. I don't know if that's just like part of the... The sure. lore that she was a witch that beat and starved yeah. everybody, you know? And I also feel like if I were in my 70s and everyone fucking hated me and blamed me for the death I'd of my children. I'd be nasty too. I'd yeah. fucking hate everyone back. Yeah. Yeah, truly. So I, I don't know what the deal is, but a lot of people use all this information. I think the producers of The Conjuring used a lot of this information for yeah, their version fair. of Bathsheba. I mean, fair. Um, and so... Lots of lore is wrapped around how she died. Also, there was different versions of how she died. They all say like, oh, she was a witch that when she died, her body turned into stone. But like, I'm pretty sure she had a stroke. Like, <laughs> like oh, I'm pretty no. sure she like had like literal paralysis or something. And so they all said oh, that she, shit. when she died, it was as if her body turned to stone just to make the story more interesting. Yikes. So um, Yikes. anyway, remember Bathsheba for a little bit later on. I will not forget her. Don't you worry. <laughs> Uh, but currently you just have to know that Caroline saw this woman in her dreams and got stabbed in the leg and it's implied that Bathsheba was this woman. Okay. So while looking for answers, um, and doing all this research, she also, this is 1973 at this point. They've been in the house for, I think, three years. Yikes. Yikes. Um, while looking for answers, she sees an ad in the paper about a organization called Pyro, which is Parapsychological Investigation and Research Organization. Love it. And she called them in, uh, and as they were looking around the house, um, this, by the way, was led by two investigators who were brothers named Keith and Carl. Uh, classic. And, Carl and classic Keith. And as they were looking around the house, once they got there, they immediately started hearing footsteps and all these noises, and they were like, they were like, it was as loud as day. Like, these were <laughs> true footsteps of someone upstairs. And then we looked at the kids being like, oh, who's up there? And the kids were like, do you not understand yet? Like, this is what like, is the oh problem. Oh, my God. Mom's like, God. It's like, that happens every day. That's um, Manny. He's getting fucked up again. <laughs> Carl apparently saw a black fog in the corner of his eye, um, which, like, moved towards him, and it surrounded him. He was surrounded in this black cloud, and then it vanished. Um, and this fog becomes something that everyone that's lived in that house has seen at least once. Mm, um, bad. Including... Andrea, she said that the fog was actually the most common thing she interacted with. Um, but so <sighs> Carl also saw the black fog. Zach himself, ZB, has seen he the fog. He did not. Aww. He did. He freaked the fuck out. Actually, this Ghost Adventures episode was really good. It was a 90-minute special, and he was Ooh. fucking losing it. He was I scared. I want to see that. Uh, the he ones was where, scared. Where, he's, where they're genuine, when he's genuinely freaked out, actually genuinely freaked me he out. He was genuinely freaked out. Yeah, yeah. Um. And so Carl saw the fog. And as for Keith, when he was doing the walkthrough, there was a window that never closed. I guess it was stuck, like it had warped or something. Right. And when he asked, like, oh, are you religious? Like, you should, if you are, you should call upon Jesus and ask for help. Or, and w as soon as he said the name Jesus, <gasps> the window slammed shut oh, no! so, so hard that the whole house shook. Oh, and no. And that was when Keith knew that there was a demon. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, don't you so, say that name in my house. If you would like me to stop, that is the first half <gasps> of the Perrin family haunting, Dude. aka the Harrisville farmhouse. Freaky stuff. I, I'm genuinely gonna be. I think it's gonna be scared tonight. It's a good one, go right? I was yeah, like, I that's I'm a, genuinely gonna be scared. I was like, this feels very Halloweeny. This it does. Super it's spooky. Scary, dude. Ugh. Welcome back, everybody, to. Uh, Christine wrapping her body with gauze. Listen, here's the thing. I tried to go pee and everything went to shit. Not literally. Sorry. That's wrong terminology. 
What I Ew. meant was all Icky. my bandages, <laughs> all my bandages fell off. Not my bandages, my mummy gauze. Listen, don't worry about it. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my um my my scary house. It really freaked situation. me out. I'm not gonna lie. I I wasn't watching the EMFs the whole time. I was like too distracted by like. Part of me kind of wishes I told the whole story today just because I want to keep the the vibe, like, while it feels all spooky and everything. So I'm going to need you to really channel that next week when we record oh, again. Oh, always. I love it. This way we have two weeks in a row of super spooky. Yes, exactly. All right. Well, now I have... Oh, we're okay. I got scared for a second. That, that <laughs> you was scared me. <laughs> you have a lot of okay. responsibility, okay? When you make these flinching motions, you I really... Know, it was- my bad. Send me into um, a tizzy. So tell me a story that is equally spooky. And if it's not, I will scream. <laughs> out of anger, not out of fear. Like out it's of like being I should on Halloween. A, being a big baby. Just okay. Uh, wah, wah. okay. <laughs> I thought we'd gotten past that. I guess not. Tell um, me a Halloween time story. I'd like to be spooked, please. Okay, oh, I had to take my Lemon that head. was fucking spooky. I just watched you regurgitate candy out of I your I didn't mouth. know you could see that. That was my lemon head. I didn't want to keep chewing on it and make the sound really awful for everybody. So I put it in the wrapper. I know that's gross. I'll eat it again later. Okay. That's the gross part, Christine. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. Anyway, moving forward. Okay. So I have some fun stuff today. Um, I originally had some notes prepared, and then I looked at them last night and was like, oh, no. These are way too much of a bummer like just just it was just too much and it was about you told kids. me there was a lot of children getting hurt and yeah stuff. it was just a lot of stuff toward children and i was like that's not a hollow in the halloween so let's leave that for next week hi juniper um so instead i was like what is halloweeny that i have that i have prepared um and i remembered that last year i think it was like a year and a half ago now um, I so I have my little YouTube channel, The X Teen Files, and I had mm. done a an episode on creepy clown stories, like true creepy clown stories, and I still have the notes from that. And I um, I have like a, a whole list here. Some of it's not on the video of like uh, real life creepy clown stories from around the world. So I'm gonna share them. Oh, okay. And um, some of them are in that YouTube video. Some are not, some are not. And then in the YouTube video, I have other people who've emailed in their stories to me. So those are not on this because I didn't get their permission to share it on the podcast. Gotcha. But I have that. And then I have some other like f- little listicles and fun facts and stuff. Love a listicle. Oh, I my know. God. Okay. Me too. So this is from, I mean, fully up front. It's from Wikipedia. But they had the best summation of like creepy crime true crime clown stories available sometimes so. wikipedia has it it's they you do know. and they list their sources you know it's like yeah it's listen it got a lot of hate when we were in elementary school but i feel like <laughs> it's a pretty great source well, look i've used it a few times sometimes it's all you it's all you can do That's when i true. was q on how on earth do you explain something like that <laughs> yeah. without like looking at a different plot summary first <laughs> yes exactly and then they give you sources like they cite their sources and you can go build off their sources anyway i'm i'm a lover of wikipedia so <clears throat> the episode that i originally did was called followed home by a clown i didn't even rewatch it i don't know if it's any good but oh i'm gonna redo it here or at least okay. do like a different spin on it so um first off i want to mention that do you know this is a little quiz do you know what the fear of clowns is called a phobia of clowns sawin phobia what no oh but oh i was thinking so of the fear of halloween fear yeah of no halloween. that was one <laughs> was of the like, things that was one of the things i almost asked you in my trivia oh that would have been uh, i was like well, that was a very fast and very wrong answer wow sawin something a phobia um no i don't know clowns it's called colrophobia, spelled C O U L R O phobia. I think like I've heard I feel like I've heard of it or seen it before, but I'll never retain it. So. Yeah, probably not. I'll ask you again next year. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so from Britannica.com, colrophobia is the irrational fear of clowns can cause panic and nausea. Although it's a rare phobia, many people find clowns creepy, if not downright scary. So mm-hmm. even people who don't have an actual phobia of clowns, um, Many of us understand why they're creepy. Sorry, yes. M. Sorry, Sassy. No, they are creepy as shit. Yeah. M they're creepy as shit. got a degree in it for some godforsaken reason, but that's okay. I felt like being creepy, I guess. I don't know. I mean, you did a good job, and you're still going strong. Thank you. 
Okay, so this is a story from Australia. I'm just going to read these and you can respond in kind. Okay. Australia, uh, two 12-year-old girls were with a parent, I believe this was 2005, buying ice cream when they were attacked by a creepy clown. While attacking the girls, the clown tried to steal one girl's phone. <laughs> I thought it was going to say ice cream cone, but it says phone. <laughs> that was me as a clown. That was me. Yeah. Yours is even more sinister. You took their ice cream right out of their hand. What um, was, can I ask? Yeah. Um, 2012. What What was the year where, like, the year of clowns, where, like, it was really fizz up yeah. and creepy? That was this, uh, I think this this year. Uh, I think it was 2012. 12, or was it okay. 2015? Hang on. There was, like, for those of you who don't remember, there was a year where, like, it became, like, a really sick prank where, like, everyone oh, 2016. Would... 2016. Sorry. 2016. I remember being in college. I what everyone was dressed as or I, I guess it was after college then yikes i was like i was um, not in college at that point everyone was like people were dressing up in clowns and like like standing in front of people's homes and like acting like they were gonna, yeah like, that's what these are them it, that's what these are from sorry i should have been more up for more clear about that yes these are no, no, no. stories they, from it, that like year-long period where everybody was like all over the world can you imagine if during that time there was also TikTok? I feel like oh, oh, I feel like every bad. first of all everyone's algorithms would have been fucked, and I feel like there would have at least been t- double or triple the amount of scares. It would have been bad, like It'd been really to a bad. new level. Yeah, because yeah. we did have YouTube and all that, but this TikTok would have made it so much so much worse. worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you're completely right. Um, so yeah, these are all kind of ha- from that the clown scare of that like year long period. What a weird thing to have to tell our grandkids about one day. I know. Just, they're not going to make, they're not going to understand it. I at all. literally talked about that in that YouTube video. I was like, because uh, two people sent in clown stories from their like adolescence. And I was like, I want to look into this. And I, I was like, God, I don't, I don't know. I'm just so glad I wasn't a participant in any of this because I feel like that would have gotten my cholerophobia sky high. I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah. I would have developed it for sure. <laughs> so. For sure. Um, Okay, so Finland, October 18th, there were two sightings of people dressed as clowns. First, around 10 people dressed as clowns jumped out of a gray van at a playground at the school. They started to hunt down three kids who escaped to an underpass where another clown was waiting with a chainsaw. Later, shit. (laughs) These are are real stories, like news articles. These aren't like urban legends. Um, Also, like hunt. That was yeah, like, that was the word we chose. Okay. <laughs> Whoever's this journalist is like very intentional with their v- verbiage. Uh, later, two adults with white overalls and pig masks were running behind at least one child and a few teenagers. Oh, good. So we're in the purge. Yeah, it's literally the purge now. Um, on the evening of October 22nd in Helsinki, two clowns jumped in front of a 30 year old man who was jogging with his dog. The dog bit one of the clowns. Good puppy. Good boy or girl. Good boy they them? or girl. And the man punched another of the clowns. <laughs> However, the clowns managed to escape. The man made a police report of the incident and the police did not find suspects. I mean, even like something. <laughs> Look at him, stupid face. Hang on. Let me get it. <laughs> I'm going to get a screenshot because I think Eva's internet went out. Okay. I just wanted a screen grab of that. Um, I hate you. <laughs> Look, I'm doing my job. I'm keeping with character. Exactly. And I wanted it for posterity's sake. Yeah, show this to your baby one day when it's like, this could have been you, but you didn't want to come out yet. So I had my, to take the reins. My baby's going to get emrophobia and never want to look at you. <sighs> You're lying. All You're right. Lying. <laughs> I'm lying, I know. Um, okay, so, I mean, even, like, I know that these are like, oh, a clown jumped out and scared a man while he was jogging. But, like, if that happened to me, I'd be oh, fucking it's terrified. Like, oh, it, I mean, like, it's funny when like you first hear it and haven't processed any of the information yeah yeah like the second you put yourself in that person's shoes if anyone whether or not they're in an outfit is jumping out at you exactly let alone something even more jarring and freaky as something people are already uncomfortable with and your poor dog i mean your dog's never gonna recover from that your dog officially has whatever that phobia is yeah (laughs) yeah the first dog it's gonna be on dr phil someday (laughs) trying to process (laughs) But, like, good for that person, honestly. Like, I am very, especially especially the year of the clowns when yeah. like people were trying to scare people yeah. and really freak them out. Like, 
I'm all for punching those clowns in the face. Absolutely. And like, get the that's fuck what, away from me. This you're isn't like funny. You're attacked. Yeah. Whether you're right. Yeah. Like you're completely right. Whether they're in a clown costume or not, like you're being attacked. Yeah. So of course you're like, going to get terrified and defensive. Well, the thing that freaked me out with the, in 2016 was that uh, enough people thought it was funny that people who thought it was, who took it seriously and were dangerous people were also playing along with it to get right. people near them. So it's like, eventually everyone needed to really be aware of what right. you don't know that on. person's intentions they could literally be stabbing you <laughs> yeah or, or they could be hoping you fun. get near them and their prop knife is like actually a real knife and <laughs> it's awful uh, yeah put your put your pacifier back in okay new zealand on october 2016 see some of these are just silly in october 2016 a person dressed as a clown stole a box of beer and handed it to a bicycling accomplice <laughs> That was literally me trying to help you. That was <laughs> a bicycling accomplice in a baby bonnet. Uh, <laughs> grab the beer. <laughs> that was me grabbing the beer and passing it off to you. That, was it. that see that one's fine because like I mean you know don't the, steal, but at least you're not like har- harming a person. Right? I feel less threatened by that. Yes, one. that's like so. their own personal gain. They're not like yeah exactly. They're in and they're out. You know <laughs> they're in there. There's out. no sick waiting game. What if the bicycle was one of those like 12 foot bicycles? Cause it's like, okay. Clown, you know, <laughs> I really wish you just only told me the headline with that information. of like <laughs> There was actually 12 smaller clowns stacked on top of each other. All bicycling. <laughs> one big trench coat on a tricycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see in England on October 12th, uh, a tradesman in Lancashire apparently tackled a knife wielding man dressed as a clown and suffered serious see? injuries. Yep. The clown was said to have had a green wig. Okay, well, you'll hear. Hold on. (laughs) No spoilers. The clown was said to have had a green wig and was wearing a, quote, silky green tracksuit with yellow lines down the sleeves and long gothic black boots. (laughs) It was later revealed to be a hoax. (laughs) The man man had simply fallen on broken glass (gasps) and fabricated the clown attack. He was prosecuted for wasting the time of the Lancashire police. (laughs) For wasting time. Why I wish would you I, do that? I wish I could call the police on people wasting my time. Like, <laughs> I would be clearly, in jail for the rest of my life. Okay. Clearly, you're putting people in jail for wasting your time. How come I can't call about my time? You you're know? right. Like, your time is like, very valuable. Like she's in she's in Newport, Kentucky, folks. That's let's go get her. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I just think it's wild that like you fell on some glass and instead of like admitting it, you were like. No, a clown in a silky green tracksuit did it. It's like, why is what that a the better option? description? Couldn't you just say like a clown in clown clothes? He went that way and then just run. I the think other he direction. was probably in, in too deep, and they were like, "Well, what was he wearing?" He's like a tracksuit. What color was it? Green. <laughs> really, Sil- like playing silky. a guessing game there with himself. <laughs> uh, that just seems like it's like when people say the b- more specific you are, the more. Like, you, if you're lying, be vague. <laughs> yes, exactly. You sound fishy when you're like, it was gothic boots. Like, you're so specific. You're like, he was wearing clothes. The end. That's all that, I got for you. He was a clown. I don't know what to tell you. I was too busy paying attention to him attacking me and not his <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. So, now we're in the United States. So, we're going to go by states. So, in California, on October 5th, a person dressed as a clown was accused of trying to kidnap a one-year-old child from his mother. See? Yep. And no why... arrests were ever made and the guy was not caught. So it's like, <gasps> that's, oh. that's terrifying. Could it have been one of those wrinkles situations? Wrinkles situations. The clown named wrinkles. Oh, that thing you may try to make me watch, even though yeah. I demanded you turn it off. Which by um, the way, I hope you're covering him in these notes because that's certainly a 2012, 2016 vibe of clowns. <laughs> I'm not. For those of you who wrinkles. don't know, it's for those of you who don't know, just go watch Wrinkles on Netflix or Hulu or whatever it was. on it was. Hulu. Don't watch it. I already told Emma. I was like, I know what this is. Turn it off. It's, it was a, like, it's a guy for hire who dresses as clowns and intentionally terrifies children. He, like, hides in, like, trundle beds at night. The parents know. Like, they pay him to do this. And he, like, yeah. hides under children's beds. Like, those parents should be arrested. I'm sorry. That's horrifying. Um, okay. Kentucky. Here we go. On October 1st, a woman reported that while she was walking on a trail at night, a clown came out of the woods, assaulted her, and attempted to drag her into the woods. Officials reported that the woman was able to fight the clown off and escape while also stating that this is the first clown sighting in Clark County, Kentucky. On the same day, a man in Bardstown mistook a woman wearing a white afghan out walking her dog for a clown and fired a warning shot with an AR-15 to scare her. 
That sounds like Kentucky. That's yeah. <laughs> the first like machine gun comes into play and it's my state. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, like also, how do you mistake someone in a white Afghan as a, For clown? a clown? I mean, Jesus. Like, what, what is that person's interpretation of a clown? I think the lady's walking a dog. Like, <laughs> leave her alone. Yeah. Like, if anything, at least the gun. clown isn't doing anything. She's yeah. Like, it's not Damn. attacking you. God. And uh, so that's horrifying. Um, Chicago, Illinois. A person in clown attire was spotted in a cemetery in Chicago, Illinois in July of 2015. See ya. Yup. This occurrence involved two residents who spotted the, quote, creepy clown scaling the gate at the Rose Hill Cemetery late at night. After the clown entered the cemetery, they turned to face the residents. Oh, there were two of them. Sorry. After the clowns entered the cemetery, they turned to face the residents and began waving slowly. Oh, it's the slow wave. It's it, yeah. it's also the intentional slow wave of like wanting you to be so yeah. disgusted. And the guy, the people there videotaped it, I guess. Blech. <sighs> After waving for, a f- oh, sorry, I'm, I misread it. They meant they as in like, we don't know the, the pronouns mm. of this clown. So it was. Well, that's polite of them. That They're was at least nice. fair. They're yeah, at least fair. Yeah. We're using words like, um, what was the word? they? Oh, hunt. But we're also right. using they, them pronouns. So they really nice. are hunting them. They are hunting so. the children. Um, yeah. So the close, clown attire guy scaled the fence. Two residents spotted the clown attire who turned around and started waving slowly. And they videotaped it. After waving for a few seconds, the clown ran into a dark wooded area and was not seen again. Police investigation of the sighting did not lead to any arrests. Blech. Also, that's really weird that this clown is climbing into a cemetery late at night, meaning, like, he doesn't know anyone's going to see him. Yeah. Like, what's he doing? What if no one's there? Like, what was the hope there? That you wouldn't be seen or that you would be seen? Because either way, I hate it. Yikes. And I would say, like, maybe it was a prank, but if the people literally went and reported it to the police, like, I imagine it wasn't just, like, a YouTube hoax. Whatever. Okay, Michigan. Two attacks were reported in Sterling Heights, a Detroit suburb. In the first incident, a seven-year-old boy was approached outside of his home at 6.50 p.m. by a person of an unspecified gender with red hair, a red nose, and red facial features wielding a sharp object. See ya. The clown scratched the boy's arm with the object, <gasps> then fled. The boy See, suffered a saying. minor injury. I know, it's horrible. Ugh. Like, some of, the, some of those clowns, like, the point was they wanted you to interact with them, and then, like, all of a sudden they're hurting you. Yeah, it's terrible. No. It's terrible. No, no, no. I'm not a fan. <sighs> also on October 6th, um, two 14-year-old girls were terrorized by two teenage women dressed as clowns who jumped out of a car and chased them. In a press release after their arrest, the Roseville police chief referred to them as morons and idiots. <laughs> Oh, classy. That's nice. I mean, they're not wrong. I think they're... Gio, you look so handsome. My TikTok star. Oh, you're so Uncle Em, your nice haircut. Let me see your little tushy. Let me see your fluffy tail. Look at Em over here. <gasps> oh, well, look he can't his... hear me, can he? No, he can't hear you. So sweet. Wow, you are so floofy. It's to torture. Em. Look at that soft, blow-dried hair. I know. He's all clean for once in his life. Silky. Silky all right, well, smooth. Sorry, I couldn't get a good angle on that, but trust me, he looks better than usual. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> his, ooh, his booty's all floofy. Ah! Wow, that's new. I love a fluffy tush. Oh, so handsome. Okay, um, let's see. So we did in Michigan, morons and idiots. Uh, North Carolina. On September 4th, children in a Winston-Salem neighborhood reported to the police about a person dressed as a clown trying to lure them into the woods. They described him as wearing white overalls and gloves, red shoes, and bushy red hair. His face was described as white with a red nose. They claim he offered them treats if they would go with him. According to police, an adult heard but did not see the clown. even creepier to just hear... Yeah, ew. Hi, folks. Like the clown I have voice treats for you. <laughs> yeah, that's even, it's almost worse. Come it's into it's the definitely woods not with worse. Me. It sounds awful, though, of like hearing God. someone lure children away. Yes, it does. In the most classic way that we're all taught not to believe. The like class, right? The classic. Which trope. makes me wonder, like, the people who are trying that line. It's like, don't you know everyone's been? I mean, I guess it still sadly is that's... successful sometimes, but. I would think, like, when you try a different tactic. I guess that's the, maybe that's their point if they're trying to just scare you. They're, like, doing the most obvious, like, honey oh, candy right, with me, right, you know? Right. It's like, what else would be scarier to hear from a creepy Christine, clown? I hate it. It's bad. Um, well, we're in Ohio now, my other home. 
On September 29th, a woman... Oh, that's today. No, that's in two days. A woman was attacked while on her porch while she was smoking. She claimed that a man dressed as a clown grabbed her throat and said, I should just kill you now. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> See, uh, what? this is the problem, folks. This is it right here. Are you kidding me? Yeah, like on her porch. She's minding her own business. Like uh, on her property. And now she's been like not only wildly physically assaulted, but yeah. beyond threatened. And like probably traumatized. The victim also stated he said that, quote, some students and teachers would wish they were never born at the junior and senior <gasps> high school today. Oh, my uh, God. So I realized now when it says Reading School Superintendent, which is literally in Cincinnati. So I was like super duper. Um, they That prompted Reading School Superintendent Chuck LaFada to cancel Friday classes in the area, prompting local private school Mount Notre Dame to close as well. So apparently this was a Cincinnati event. Uh well, hey, Yikes. I'm proud of the teachers for at being like, At least they like, took it seriously. No, like, we're not going back to school then. No. Like, at least they took it seriously. I'd yeah. be terrified to go back to school the day after. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, very, very happy that they at least did something versus, I agree. like, just shrugged it off. Like, they took it seriously. Um, Oklahoma. On October 16, 2016, just outside the city limits of Pryor, Oklahoma, a female motorist was reportedly attacked by two clowns after being flagged down by a woman posing as a motorist in need of assistance. She Ugh. said the clowns forcibly dragged the motorist from her vehicle, choked her, extinguished a cigarette on her face, and wrote the words clown <gasps> posse on her forehead. She later confessed to having made up the story and said she oh. was responsible for her own injuries. Ew. She wrote clown posse on her own forehead. She burnt and, herself with a yeah. cigarette? Oh, no. People are unwell, is all oh, I'm going to no. say. But, it, I mean, sadly, it had gotten to a point, at least in 2016, I wouldn't yeah. believe that a thousand percent. I know, because it's like things, I mean, if someone's getting choked on their own porch and, ugh, yeah, agreed. Yeah, it wasn't just, like, it really did start in the beginning of, like, being far away and just, like, giving a creepy aesthetic. And it very quickly became, like... Th Someone out there is going to realize that it's a trend now to completely cover your face, be unidentifiable, and yeah. do whatever the fuck you want with the intention of freaking someone out for, for notoriety. Like, that yeah. was, it was such Strangers. an easy cocktail for, like, bad people to get in the mix. And exactly. it happened. Especially when they just targeted children, too, because it was like, oh, such a ha-ha trope to target children with yeah. clown costumes. I mean, it's sick. It was awful. Well, here's my... I think the creepiest one. This is the last one of the state lists. This is South Carolina. On August 21st, 2016, there was an alleged clown sighting in Greenville at the Fleetwood Manor apartment complex. Children in the complex reportedly witnessed clowns or a group of clowns attempting to whisper or talk to the children. Oh, the, no. <laughs> the children. Especially in, in an apartment complex. No, like that's I know. people's home. Your home. That's not you even, live there. That's exactly. not even a park or something not where like you can run away. Playground. Right. It's literally at your home. Yikes. The children told their parents that the clowns, equipped with flashing green laser lights, said they lived in an abandoned house in the woods near a small lake. Greenville police came to the complex to investigate and did find a trail in the woods leading to a small house and small lake, but no evidence of clown paraphernalia was found. While some of these reports have been harmless, others, uh, other reports have been more suspicious. In one instance, a woman reported a clown in, I'm sorry, a woman reported a person in a clown costume was standing in her backyard and ran away as she took a picture. In one case, an individual heard clanging chains and a banging noise at his front door, while other cases report a clown offering money or candy to children to follow them into the woods. <laughs> like, oh my fucking this God. Is what so, in the world? One, ta one town in South Carolina. Ugh. Like, yuck. Um, so that's terrible. Um, that's just a list of some fun fact, fun true crime clown facts. Um, and now I have a little bit about the fear of the cholerophobia. Oh, the thing I now have. Cool. The thing we all have now. You're welcome. Um, from healthline.com. Oh, what, I'm so what glad they're... The fear of clowns, M. What do you think? <laughs> what causes it? Yeah. Uh... I would, I would say, imagine it's something about their the makeup and like taking away facial expression. Oh, okay, I like that. I mean, I was just kind of being sarcastic because it says a oh. traumatic event. <laughs> so, oh, well, but yeah, no, I think on a deeper level, too. you're a hundred percent right. Like, I some here's something that you'll now notice about people, everyone. I always notice when someone's eyebrows don't move. Yeah, like when people it with Botox freaks. don't have expressions me out no like i've met people who like have like i don't know what just naturally like they like aren't expressive in their eyebrows and it freaks me out <laughs> like even when they're making faces that like would warrant your eyebrows to move yeah they just stay 
and it freaks me out every time. And so I think there's something in the eyebrows and the fact that you take them away and you make like little rainbow arches and stuff. Ugh. And then you've like your whole face, like all of your your lines are covered up. I think it, I, it's got to be something like well, that. Well, aren't you the one? I think you taught me something about, you taught me a lot about clowns. Don't get me wrong. But I think you taught me something about clowns where there were different types of clowns, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. what, what are they again? Do you remember? The the main one, the one that freaks me out, it freaks people out the most is white face because it has such, it has such few characteristics on its face. Ugh. It's like a literal white face. And so Pain, there's yeah. at least the other ones, like they're, or at least depending on the makeup, if it's like circles and everything, it's creepy, but at least more friendly versus some other clowns that do like triangles and corners and really f- it's like subconsciously freaks people out that it's like danger because it's corners and sharp. Whoa, that's very so. Freudian. Isn't, um, but isn't there one that was like a sad clown that gets made fun of or something? And then one is like a, am I making that up? I thought there were like three types no, 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 of clowns. No, you're right. I'm trying to remember them now. I mean, I'm putting I, you on the spot. This was like years ago that you told me this. <laughs> no, it's just a, if you don't use it, you lose it situation. But if you just type in three, the three types of clowns, there's white face. The only reason I know white face is because that's the one I was. I was the Oh, God. One. Three types of clowns. See, I should have done this research mm-hmm. in advance. I'm sorry. The white face, the august, and the... That's the one you told me about. Yeah. August is like the sad one, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then there's one just called the character clown, but that's yeah. I don't, oh the hobo. That's the one I, I know yeah. better. Okay. Um. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I remember you teaching me that, and I was like, oh, because I feel like the concept of clowns comes from such an old, creepy tradition. Anyway, like there's yeah, that's um, it's white face, uh, August, and then hobo or. Well, the tramp, but the tramp has a whole bunch of like m- categories, subcategories, it, including hobo and things like that. Wow. But okay. yeah, the th- I think the hobo is or the tramp is usually like the the sad one, and the august is like the funny one, and then the white face is like the straight man. I think. Okay, interesting. I think that's how it works. I'm I'm definitely blanking. I just feel like they were, it comes from such a creepy tradition anyway, or like not a creepy tradition, but like just such an odd tradition that it was bound to be creepy no matter yeah. what i don't know it's just they're really concept. it really is something i think about covering up all of your facial expressions yeah. to imply that someone that's my to it's totally just a personal thought but i would think if you can't distinguish non-verbally that you're a safe person yeah then like and if the fact that everything all their personality is so over exaggerated yeah. it's like really overstimulating it's like very yeah. jarring yeah no i totally agree but then there's something creepy about the fact that like all these creepy people, they're not even doing anything. They're just standing there yep. with really happy smiles yeah. on and just like slowly waving. And it's like, none of it feels like a normal human. I wonder if that's part of it too, is that like, they're usually so bubbly and bouncy. So that when they're creepy and still, it's like, yeah, off. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah. Oh. It has, that has, I mean, that's kind of like, if you're, I imagine if you're like laughing and having a good time, that's one thing. But if you're like standing still all of a sudden, a chuckling, <laughs> like it's really, really disturbing. Yeah, I agree. What's okay, the so, thing that you don't like about about clowns? Um, you know, I would agree that I get uncomfortable when I can't see somebody's that I can't read their face. I think that's mm-hmm. it because I don't I don't love the mascots. I'm just not like a <laughs> I don't know. It just freaks me out to have like. It's it's Super not normal. It's fake not, face at me. Yeah, agree. It, it is unnatural. So. I think that's probably it. Probably unsettles people. I would think. Yeah. Um, so Healthline says phobias often come from a variety of sources. Usually a deeply traumatic and frightening event, like probably all of the above. Um, occasionally, however, you'll come across a fear with roots you can't identify, meaning you don't know why you're so intensely afraid of the thing in question. You just are. In the case of cholerophobia, there are a few likely causes. First is scary movies. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a connection between scary clowns and media and being in t- people being intensely afraid of them. Uh, viewing too many scary movies with clowns at an impressionable age can have a lasting impact, even if it was just once at a friend's sleepover. Okay. Aww. Okay. Sad. Uh, two is traumatic experiences. Having an experience that involves a clown where you are paralyzed with terror or were unable to escape a situation could be classified as a traumatic experience. Your brain and body would be wired from that point to flee any situation involving clowns. While this isn't always the case, it's possible that your phobia may be tied to traumas in your life, and it is important to discuss this with a therapist or family member. I'm loving the, the mental awareness, the I mental know. health awareness here. I know. I love a good Healthline article. I read a lot during my pregnancy. I love that they're on the up line. and up of clowns. Yeah, they're like, we got 
got you covered. Don't even worry about it. Um, and then the third one is a learned phobia. And it says this one is a little less common, but it's equally possible that you may have learned your fear of clowns from a loved one or trusted authority figure. Mm. We learn rules about the world from our parents and other adults. So seeing your parent or older sibling terrified of clowns may have taught you that clowns are a thing to fear. So, um, I mean, and then you think about like John Wayne Gacy and it's like, well, he yeah. didn't fucking help, right? <laughs> like, I don't He was know. not um, one of our favorite clowns, that's no. for sure. He didn't give them a good a reputation that to be desired, I would say. Did not, did not, did not, did not. Um, so that's the end of my clowning, but I do want to... Uh, I did also do a little dig into, just for fun, Halloween true crime stats mm. to see, like, what, what I could dig up. Um, and it is... I've learned it's pretty much an urban legend that crime goes up on Halloween. The only oh, thing that really does go up is like vandalism, uh -huh. which is a crime, obviously. But in terms of like the stuff we cover, like true crime, um, it's not necessarily true that like, you know, there's a big spike in violence. I would be I would expect I guess I under like are they talking like burglaries and stuff because people are out and so you could break into houses and steal or definitely like, that of... too I think mostly like I would I, my thought was like egging houses all that mischief uh -huh. stuff but also I think burglar burglaries and that kind of thing perhaps as well um, but not I know the uh, from high school I can tell you underage drinking goes up for sure on Halloween. oh that I believe <laughs> <laughs> crime in that way also I imagine yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I found it, uh, a little listicle here, and this is from a website called emcsecurity.com. So oh. fully a biased website about a security, home security system, but they had some fun facts about security on Halloween and tips that you can do to keep yourself safe. So I thought it could be helpful. Um, so they say, take the following steps below to ensure you, your family, and your home safety on Halloween. Uh, if you leave the house, leave the lights on because as M said, you know, if burglars don't think you're home, well, uh -huh. not good. Um, don't post on social media until you're home. Um, oh. even if you're out at like a party or whatever, like save that for when you get back so that you're not leaving people to know you're not at home. Smart. Um, posting a picture on Facebook of your pets or kids at a party across town lets criminals know your house is empty and a prime <laughs> target. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. clear your car of any valuables because also with people like roaming the streets you don't know how pe right. someone's gonna s just slide in and be under the radar um let's see remove anything uh you don't want to lose from your car keep your doors and windows locked even when you're home um it's easy to forget to lock your door after you finished handing out candy so even when you come in from just handing out some candy just lock it behind you mm -hmm. you never know that's also a Christine, a desperate Christine ask of you because you just okay. always lock your damn door. If, if Christine is asking, <laughs> please do it. <laughs> please. Or just tell me you did to make me feel better. But that also makes it just as easy for a burglar to slip in when you've stepped away from handing out candy. So lock your doors. Uh, move valuables out of sight because if people are coming to your door, they ah, can see your TV. They can see. So smart. Right? Like cover up anything that might be laying out. Because even someone's shitty father who's walking them around trick-or-treating could come up to your door and see what you got going on like, in there oh, so they can come back later. Got some crystal goblets in there. I'm going to come so, back for those later. I, I am. De I would I would break into someone's house for some crystal goblets. You kidding me? <laughs> in that bonnet too. And it would be traumatizing. I, I don't would know. do a slow baby wave. Just like. <laughs> I would develop whatever the fear of oversized babies is because um, <laughs> I think I already have it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. Move valuables of sight. If trick-or-treaters can spot your flat screen, screen TV from your doorway, so can a burglar uh, uh, smart. or crystal goblet, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, sign up. Baby. And then this is kind of or big baby. Uh, and then sign up for monitored home security, which you know, you could go with EMC security. They seem to be on top of their shit. But, you know, you could do any home security system you want. This is not an ad. I just found their website. So they um, do seem to be promoting themselves, though, with like, you're going to want to read this article oh, on our security website. And it's know? funny because I read like a several and I was like, oh, this is like the most helpful, though. <laughs> like, this is the most like so actually smart. interesting one. Um, so they did a good job. But yeah, so if you, you know, just lock it. I guess just don't treat. I know people on Halloween. It's kind of like people are coming to your house 
for good times or people are coming in and out or like up and to your door. But like, you know, you never know who's in the, who's not everybody has good intentions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I hope nobody dresses as a clown this year. If you do, please don't come to my house. I'm not interested. And just like, if you do stay far away, like best, best thing you can do is like, maybe just take a selfie, put it on Instagram and then go, take the makeup off and then do something different (laughs) and that's only if like if that's your profession or something and you're known in your area as that fine but if today's the day you become a clown i don't i don't want to be there with you i would rather not participate in that experience with you i can't wait to hear about it later though yeah true fair you send it in to us for sure Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. i'll also say like this is for your own safety because i feel like people now have kind of a uh, a go-kart like anytime they see somebody too close as a clown like they can lash out and be violent mm-hmm. toward you so it's for your own yeah. safety like uh, it is for your own safety a thousand percent just like keep a hula hoop with you maybe and put yeah. it on you and just like know that that's like the safe space don't yes. get closer covid to safety also so you know there you go social distancing clowns that, i'm um, into that i'm into that yeah yeah, yeah man yeah. I guess that no matter what you're dressed as, keep your distance from strangers. Okay, that's fair, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to write my own article. It's going to be really messy. And I don't know. I just want to write a listicle. And that it'll security website's going to be pissed at you for stealing their <laughs> idea. Stealing my- <laughs> oh, I'm just jealous. That's all. Anyway, so that's all I've got. Just some creepy fun. listicle fun facts. Love a good listicle. Love a good clown. Love a good uh, safety tip. Yay! So, be safe it. out there, everybody. I hope everyone has all of their favorite candies. Do, oh. do you have a favorite candy this oh. Halloween you're hoping to get? You know, besides a sweet little baby. <laughs> oh God! Um, great question, M. Thank you for asking. I really like anything chocolatey with like texture, so like a Snickers. I love a good Snickers. What you love you? a good peanut. Everything I love you want peanut, has yeah. a peanut in it. I love a good almond joy too, though. But you don't like that, do you? I love a good almond joy. I don't oh, like you do. Mounds. Okay. I don't either. Not a fan of the mounds. Um, yeah. I, what do I want? I love the green Kit Kats. I've already told you about oh, that. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. Yep. And they're called Witch's Brew flavor, which is so, so fun. cute. Uh, well, now that it's Halloween, obviously I've got a bowl of Count Chocula waiting for me in the Yay! kitchen. So there's that. And then. I love Kit Kats. Oh my By God. By the time people hear this, Halloween will have already passed. But since it's the beginning well, of It'll October be on Brass, Halloween. So it'll be like the day of. Yeah, well, right? right, yeah, yes. And right now, in current you and me time, yeah, I'm very excited to get the apple cider cracked open and do some spooky stuff and watch some spooky movies. Yay! As for Halloween, though, I'm sad that that means that, like, people are, feel like they that might have to end in the next week or so. So I hope that everyone is coping well with the fact that spooky season is coming to an end. Um, I hope you get all your last fall festivals the in. The good news is and it's still sweater weather. Still sweater weather. And Love we still got weather. pumpkins, so don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Well, f- I hope go to all your fall festivals while mm-hmm. you still can. Figure out your Thanksgiving plans. If that means staying home and eating mac and cheese like I did last year, it's yep. a good plan. I've I tried agree. it. Tried and true. Um, and other than that, happy Halloween, everyone. And then we got I hope holidays. everyone feels spooky. Christmas time. Don't worry. We're going to do it all over again. It's okay. It's just Circle not the spooky con- time, Cycle so continues. I know. But we'll keep the spooky times. We always do. That's kind of what we're here for. All right. Well, I guess we'll talk. We'll talk about those holidays when we. Oh, get and there. then our tour's coming, and then like you'll be fine because you'll get to see us. Basically, by March is when you should really start worrying about yourself. Or then like, we're gonna be sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why we drink.